Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. Including King of Pro Wrestling, Zack Sabre Jr., the new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, beating Tetsuya Naito to win the belt yesterday. Today. And uh, Dave, how much of the show did you see? I saw the whole show. It was a really good show. It was yesterday. Actually, technically, you're right. It's 11-19. Yes. Damn it. Anyway, what'd you think? Oh, it was a really easy show to watch. Um, there was, like, no matches of the year or anything like that, but pretty much every match was good. And, um, I mean, I can't say show and Doki was good, but it, went, it only went 14 seconds. But maybe that was even good. I don't know for, for what it was. But, um, yeah, fun show. A lot of news came out of it. Obviously, the biggest news is Hiroshi Tanahashi announced his retirement January 4, 2026. So he's going to go about uh, uh, 14 and a half more months, uh, retire at the Tokyo Dome, unless he uh, his goal is to wrestle for the IWGP title on that show. And if he wins, he will then retire when he loses the championship. That sounds familiar. Yeah. So um, maybe that's where he got it from. But, uh, you know, I mean, Hiroshi Tanahashi is one of the most influential, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. And, uh, yeah, he's going to retire days after John Cena. So it's like two, uh, like two of probably the four or five biggest stars of this generation retiring, um, you know, within a week of each other, you know, and they're kind of equivalents. I mean, Cena and Tanahashi were kind of like, the uh, in the same era, you know, Cena was the top star in the United States and Tanahashi was the top star in Japan. So um, it's uh, you know, I mean, what a what a phenomenal phenomenal career. You know, genius worker. You know, I mean, as far as a guy who could have excellent matches while you know physically just knees were shot. I mean, he was unbelievable at being able to do that. He was like a Terry Funk. I mean. When it came to the big shows and you knew like he couldn't do it until really this year, he pretty much did it consistently. And he had, you know, when he was healthy, I mean, he's he's one of the best. He's one of the best I've ever seen as far as consistent, consistent runs before Okada came along. And even during Okada's run, I mean, Tanahashi was one of the best in the world. And um, Tanahashi and Okada, uh, man, that may be that may be. Um, the greatest multi-year rivalry as far as big shows go in wrestling history. It's certainly way up there if it's not the greatest. And uh, great baby face, great heel when he needed to be. Like I said, genius worker. Um, and uh, man, you know, eight time I think IWGP champion, something like that. You know, um, um, lot, a lot of records. In the history of New Japan Pro Wrestling, he won more singles main events than anyone except for Antonio Inoki, which really says something because, you know, that company's, um, you know, 52 years old and an awful lot of people went through that company. And, um, you know, just a, you know, cool guy, uh, great hair. What else can I say? Um, so, you know, he's going to do his countdown tour. Um, you know, he did his 25th anniversary match today. Um, in fact, when he announced his retirement, they went total heat. He announces his retirement, and then Evil and Utro and those guys, they all attack him and mm. laid Fair him about. out. Laid him out right after he did this, right as he's doing the speech. You know, they, they all attacked him and laid him out. So that was like the um, the biggest thing. It was, um, uh, where was where, so it? So it was uh, Tanahashi showed Umino and... Um, and El Fantasmo beating uh, Yujiro, Evil, and uh, Yoshinobu Kanemaru. And then, uh, yeah, Tanahashi said, this career, it all went in a flash. Um, it'll be a 26-year career. Basically, basically said, um, I will be back next year for my 26th year, but there will not be a 27th year. And um, express gratitude. Um, to you know all the fans all the fans who cheered him all the fans who booed him um and uh he just said that it's uh it's the time and um he said i never got tired in the ring and i never quit 
and uh, yeah, that's when uh, those dudes all attacked him. Evil Dick Togo. Evil and Dick Togo did it first. Phantasma tried to lay, make the save, and Ren Narita hit Phantasma with the push-up bar. Um, Ren Narita, by the way, won the TV title uh, today, and um, Evil said that you don't get to decide when you're done. I decide because this is my company now. So that was that. Well, why don't you take us through these matches? Okay, so it opened with uh, Mystico and Romu Takahashi, which is a hell of an opener. It was just too short to be what I would call a great match. The t the match from start to finish, basically it was all of Mystico's spots um, and ta and uh, uh, Hiromu just basically being there for all of them. Everything looked good. And, um, you know, just whatever. Um, Hiromu Takashi's do doing a new move, which is called like a, the figure four cloverleaf. So it's a combination of the two moves. And he actually uh, tried it a couple times. And then he had it on at the end. And Mystico tapped out, which was quite the shock. They were only eight minutes into the match when it happened. I mean, it was, it was the way they were working and everything. It did feel like it would be a short match, but I didn't think it'd be eight minutes. But it was. And um, then we had the big challenge where um, Mystico challenged Romu for hair versus mask and they shook hands and accepted now that's been done before when they were at um or i think it was i believe it was arena coliseo but whatever when it whatever the last show that did in mexico might have been arena mexico actually but they, they did main event just a couple months ago very recently um and kind of did the same thing uh but you know for for mystico to lose clean there's probably something going on there you know because he only loses he only loses for angle reasons, you know. He doesn't lose just to lose. So, um, yeah, big, big surprise. Crowd liked it. Uh, then we had Drill Maloney and Clark Connors defending the IWGP Junior Tag Titles against Kushida and Kevin Knight. This was a great match. And uh, championship change. Kevin Knight pinned Drill Maloney after um, uh, Kushida. Um, uh, Kushida did something to him. Um and then uh, Knight did basically a cradle, um, kind of double team. They didn't know that uh, they basically were uh, destroying Kushida, and they didn't know that he had tagged out. But some of the stuff that Kush that um, Clark Connors and um, Clark Connors and Maloney have a have a great look as a team. They work tremendous, super physiques, both of them. And um, you know, Kushida's obviously you know very good technical wrestler. Kevin Knight is kind of like uh, Montez Ford. Uh, incredible leaping ability, and he probably uses it. It might be better than Montez Ford's. He hurt his leg, and he was still doing, like, drop kicks at about God knows how high. Kushida had one of the guys, I forgot which one, um, on his shoulders, and the guy from the ground is drop kicking the guy on his shoulders right in the face. Uh, or actually, just under the face, right here. Unbelievable leaping ability. He did a pl uh, springboard plancha, over the guardrail and it at, at uh, Sumo Hall, like that's far. They have the front row way back there, and he cleared it and got there. And there was, um, you know, leapfrog spots that were just unbelievable. Um, he's getting better too. He's getting better. I mean, he used to just be the great leaping ability. He's getting to be a lot better wrestler. Um, he's something to watch. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.